Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. Today is a named reaction episode, and we'll be talking about the Julia Lithgow olefination. This is an alkene formation that figures prominently into many modern total syntheses and is often used in fragment coupling strategies. So, as an overview, the Julia Lithgow olefination works by starting with an alkyl phenyl sulfone, which can be deprotonated to give a nucleophile that can attack a carbonyl. Subsequent acylation arrives at a beta acyloxy sulfone, which can be treated with a single electron reductant, sodium amalgam, to provide normally E alkenes, although that is a somewhat substrate dependent stereochemical outcome. Taking a more detailed look mechanistically, we can start by deprotonating the alkyl phenyl sulfone with a base to generate the alpha methylated alkyl phenyl sulfone. That species can then act as a nucleophile in the presence of a carbonyl electrophile to form a beta alkoxy sulfone. Now, acylation of the alkoxide yields the beta acyloxy sulfone, which we were saying before can be used to access the alkene product. The specifics of this final one electron reduction are worth taking a closer look at because it turns out that the details can change depending on which one electron reductant is being used. For example, in the case of sodium amalgam in the presence of ethanol, we would start by deprotonating alpha to the sulfone with sodium ethoxide, which can form by the reaction of sodium with ethanol. This triggers an elimination that goes with expulsion of the carboxylate group and results in alkene formation. Then the sulfone can be reduced via a one electron reduction with sodium amalgam, which results in decomposition to a vinyl radical that can equilibrate to the more stable geometric isomer. Now a second reduction with sodium amalgam gives a vinyl anion that can be protonated with ethanol to arrive at the alkene product. Okay, so let's see how the picture changes if we use samarium diiodide as an alternative one electron reductant. In this case, it turns out that the one electron reduction occurs first, by the same electron flow as before, to give a secondary alkyl radical that's stereochemically labile at the position of the radical, and can equilibrate to the more stable isomer prior to product formation. In this mechanism again, we're going to invoke a second one electron reduction to arrive at a carbanion that can fragment to produce the alkane product. So now that we've had a look at the classical Julia Lithgow olefination, let's check out some important variations. First, let's look at a variation called the modified or one-pot Julia olefination, which is possible when we replace the phenyl ring on the sulfone with a benzothiazole. Now, using that sulfone as a nucleophile in the same way as before, we can access an alkoxide anion that can undergo a Smiles rearrangement and subsequent decomposition step to arrive at the alkene product in a more efficient manner. Here, the electron flow for that rearrangement is first going to lead to formation of a spirocyclic intermediate, which can then collapse to form a sulfonate salt. Then, the sulfonate salt can decompose to release SO2 and the heterocyclic byproduct during the formation of the alkane. For more on the Smiles rearrangement, check out the review by the Greeny group at the bottom. A further variation that we'll take a look at is the Julia Kaczynski olefination, where rather than a benzothiazole on the sulfone, we have a phenyl tetrazole. This operates in the same manner as the so called modified Julia olefination, but it gives improved E selectivity, which comes as a result of a higher diastere selectivity during the initial addition. So with that, let's take a look at some recent applications in total synthesis. Our first example comes from the Shindo group, who developed a route to bonkrekic acid. In this key fragment coupling step, they used the Julia Kaczynski olefination to bring together the starting materials and form this product, where the new alkene is marked in the blue box. It's worth noting that the installation of the phenyl tetrazole in the first place was enabled by a Mitsunobu reaction earlier in the synthesis, where a subsequent oxidation led to the sulfone. Downstream elaboration of the product of the Julia Kaczynski reaction allowed the completion of the synthesis of boncrackic acid. In another application of the Julia Kaczynski reaction as a means of fragment coupling, the Shu and Yi groups found that using this phenyl tetrazole sulfone, they could form the desired E alkene with 6 to 1 E Z selectivity. Here, they observed that running the reaction with HMPA and at cryogenic temperature were crucial to obtaining good levels of E Z selectivity. Afterwards, they were able to elaborate this intermediate into this diastereomer of Cali spongiolid. Then, as an added benefit of using a late-stage convergent Sonogashira coupling, they were able to explore different stereochemical permutations on each side of the molecule. By making these four stereoisomers, they were not only able to identify which one matched natural Cali spongiolid, but they were also able to compare their biological activities against a range of cancer cell lines. In another example, the Takamura group used the Julia Kaczynski olefination in their synthesis of two diastereomers of 6 chlorotetrahydrofuran acetogenin. In this first step, they used the Julia Kaczynski olefination followed by an acetonide deprotection with titanium tetrachloride to access this intermediate possessing an E alkene and a free diol. Then they elaborated the product into this intermediate. Using this intermediate, they carried out a synthetic sequence which started with a tempo oxidation of the primary alcohol, 
followed by a novel Z-selective modified Julia olefination that was established by Bonini, and finally, a removal of the TMS group on the alkyne. This Z-selective modified Julia olefination has been described by the Bonini group as a reaction where the alkane geometry is primarily linked to the specific identity of this propargyl sulfone. So, using that approach, the Takamura group was able to elaborate their previous intermediate in two directions to access two diastereomers of 6 chloro acetogenin This allowed them to determine that it's this diastereomer on the left that matches the natural sample, which allowed a definitive stereochemical assignment. It's also worth pointing out here that the way they achieved this diastereodivergent synthesis was by subjecting the intermediate to a Mitsunobu reaction with paranitrobenzoic acid, followed by a hydrolysis, in order to invert the stereochemistry of the secondary alcohol, which is a tactic we explored in episode 3 when we talked about the Mitsunobu reaction. And that'll wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this named reaction episode. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.